Welcome to Diligent Canine, and in this video I'm going to talk about kennels, crates, and the good, the bad, and some of the ugly parts of that, and some of the misconceptions with... Yeah. Welcome to Diligent Canine, and in this video I'm going to talk about crate training, your dog, and some of the misconceptions associated with that. Let's start off with some big picture ideas about how a uh, crate is used for your dog. So in some countries, I hear that it is actually illegal to keep your dog in a crate. Um, that's not the case here in the United States. So uh, hopefully you're in a country that, that is not illegal because it is a great idea for your dog. And the principle behind a having a crate or a kennel for your dog is not not to punish the dog, but to give structure and organization to the dog. Um, so it's not a tool that is used to punish a dog, like a timeout, and to, I'll get into why that is a bad idea um, in a little bit, but it is something to give organization to the dog. This is your space, this is where we go for this, and things like that. It organ helps organize their life. Something that irritates me is when people refer to a crate as a cage, and right away that gets into some negative connotations and starts down a spiral of false beliefs um, that, that simply aren't true. Um, believing that a keeping your dog in a crate is somehow cruel or inhumane, um, but that's not the case at all. Um, hopefully it is not the case. A, a crate is a tool. Any tool can be misused, any tool can be abused. So um, it is designed for a function, to, and that function is to contain your dog, and they work really well for that. So um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the conceptual ideas with crates, um, but I'm not really gonna get into how to train your dog to get more comfortable in the crate. I'll do that in a future video. Crates, when they're used properly, are give structure to your dog's life. So a crate is something that you use while you're at work and you don't want your dog to have free reign in the house, or maybe even when you're home. You've got a young puppy um, that you're not, um, they're mature enough that you're not keeping them tethered to you while you're going about the house for your daily business but you don't want to give them free reign in the whole house, or you might need to do a specific task, um, whatever you're doing in your house that you might not be able to pay attention to and manage the dog. So you put them in a crate for a little bit, or perhaps you haven't quite mastered potty training yet, so you keep your dog in a crate overnight. So whether you're at work or overnight, or if you've got to leave your house for a little bit um, and, and you rent, um, and it's not worth risking damage to your house, um, which as a note to that, a, a large, strong dog, uh, you all, if you're watching this, have seen my dog Dean, he's a Shepherd Malinois mix. Um, he's pretty well behaved in the house. I could leave for a while and I don't think there would really be any damage to my house. However, as a renter, it's not worth the risk of potential damage that he could cause in my home in a matter of, of minutes, let alone um, an hour or two or three or four um, on one bad day. And that's really what you have to prepare for. Um, you have to kind of prepare and anticipate the worst. So most days he's fine, but just like people have bad days, dogs have bad days as well. So a dog with his strength and size, intelligence, could do hundreds, potentially thousands of dollars of damage in just a matter of minutes. You know, you see pictures and videos all the time about um, dogs much smaller than Dean gutting couches and uh, mattresses and things like that. That stuff's not cheap to replace and um, it's pretty inconvenient, especially when it's not as simple as just buying more stuff for yourself when it's somebody else's property, like your landlord. Crating your dog can also be a great way to manipulate their drive. It can cap their drive, it can help build anticipation. Um, I believe it's in a Mark Keating video for Learberg where he talks about crating his dog for 
five to 15 minutes before every training session to sort of um, keep the dog's attention, um, keep the dog's focus and attention limited. So he's limiting the dog's stimulation by keeping it in a crate before letting that excitement and um, redirecting that focus to him for a training session and then sort of the inverse of that, putting the dog back uh, into the crate for a short period to sort of let the dog collect its thoughts. And that's um, anthropomorphizing a little bit, but um, the, the principle is the same. You're limiting the amount of stimulation to the dog, so their focus remains on the training, which isn't a bad idea. It also helps contain and regulate their behavior. It helps um, to transition from a very excited, energetic state um, that you want your dog to be in when you're training to to down-regulate to, all right, now we need to chill out and be ready to just go about the house again. When you're getting a kennel for your dog, you need to pick an appropriate sized um, crate. Sorry, I said kennel. Um, when you're picking a crate for your dog, you don't want something huge. And when I'm talking about crates here, I'm talking about wire crates just for containment. Um, your airline approves carriers, your plastic crates, um, they're, they're gonna be a little smaller because obviously they have to be transportable, whether that is in uh, built into the back of your vehicle, comes in and out of your vehicle modularly, or you're actually traveling on an airline. Um, we'll get to those in a second. <clears throat> but for wire crates, your dog essentially needs to be able to stand up and turn around. You don't want much more space than that. Um, a lot of them come with, a, the larger crates come with a divider wall, so that um, that's not necessarily for putting two puppies or small dogs in the same crate. What it's for is to limit the space for one puppy, and as it grows, it can occupy the space of the whole crate. So you want your dog to be able to stand up without their back or their head touching the top of the crate, and they should be able to comfortably turn around. So when the dog is standing up, their, their head should not be touching the top of the crate, their nose should not be touching the front, and their rear should not be touching the rear of the crate. So in other words, the dog should be able to stand up and turn around without, um, not like a full, full rotation, without bending their body and turn around, that's just unrealistic. But the dog should not be touching any of the walls, the dog should be able to stand up and turn around and lay down without discomfort. So the dog can stand up and stretch a little bit. Um, it can kind of move around, but you don't want the crate so big that the dog can relieve himself inside the crate. That's what the dividers are for for the smaller or younger dogs. So um, you don't want the dog to get comfortable enough in there that he can pee or poop on one end of the crate and sleep on the other. That's a bad thing. That um, will ruin all your potty training what you want is the dog to be in such a tight space that it realizes, mm, I really don't want to poop or pee in here because I'm going to have to lay in it. And the dogs don't necessarily think that exact way, but they are much more disinclined to relieve themselves in a space where they know they're going to have to lay in their mess. Um, obviously, some dogs do that. Um, it is problematic, but it does help um, most of the time. When we get into airliner containers, I mentioned that those are naturally gonna be smaller. Um, I would say generally the same sizing applies, though naturally they're gonna be a little more rounded, a little slimmer, and it might be a little more snug fit because your dog isn't going to be in them um, for as long of a time. I would say that the chances of your dog being um, in a crate or a kennel for six hours at a time for part of or all of your work day is much more likely than having to be um, in a road trip for six hours or being on an airplane for six hours. So they can be a little smaller, but again, you don't want the dog's nose to be touching the door, his rear to be touching the back, or his head to be touching the top. Um, as far as the durability of these different crates and containers. Um, I don't have a specific recommendation for wire crates. A lot of them are collapsible. A lot of them are made very similarly. Um, you've kind of got to use your best judgment. Um, I don't know off the top of my head a recommendable brand. You've kind of just got to know your dog. Um, 
some dogs can be destructive. Um, m many are, especially when contained. Um, my dog is a Shepherd Malinois mix, and um, while he, he was quite an escape artist initially, he was never destructive to the crate. Um, so that just goes to show you that any breed, any particular dog of any given breed could behave quite differently than you're expecting. As for airline containers and vehicle containers, um, Gunner Kennels, uh, G-E, sorry, G-U-N-N-E-R, makes outstanding ones. Watch their durability stress tests on YouTube. Really incredible product. Um, as far as outdoor kennel runs, I've got a um, four by eight top paw. Um, I think I forget what the model is. Um, it works really well. It's welded. Um, don't get one that's not welded. Again, you need something durable. Um, and you need something that you can make sure your dog will stay secured in. So a lot of um, wire crates and kennels come with some variation of a double locking mechanism where you need to like lift one handle in order to manipulate another handle to open the door. I have no idea how, but I've seen and heard of many, many, many dogs escaping these, these types of um, uh, carriers and crates. So um, things like zip ties and keychain carabiners are really helpful in these types of situations. Um, when I was still using a wire crate for my dog, I would simply clip the keychain carabiner over one of the one of the double latches. So over the, the handle that you say had to lift up, for example, before you open the door, um, there's no way you could do that without thumbs. Um, you couldn't remove the carabiner without thumbs. So just remember your dogs are super smart um, and they're watching you put them in this container and secure it maybe multiple times a day. So they're always learning from you. Um, don't underestimate their intelligence, so use a double lock. Um, in the case of my kennel run that I have, um, the lock is like a V-shaped lock that slides down over the door, um, but it has uh, a hinge that it will only lift you have to lift it up to a certain height before it's able to rotate and so the way that I sort of triple lock that is by um, letting the clasp go down and I put one of those keychain carabiners um, through through the pinhole so the um, the lever that lock latches the door um, you can't lift it up unless you remove the carabiner and again you need thumbs for that. The last thing I want to cover in this general overview about crates and kennels is how long your dog should be kept in them. Um, a lot of people, like I said, myself included, use crates as containment while they're at work for their dog. This is a great idea. It's exactly what they're made for. However, you've got to consider how long the dog is going to be in there and what's fair to the dog. So most dogs hold their pee um, for four to six hours, something like that. Um, obviously, if you've got a younger puppy, their bladders physically aren't as big. If you've got an older dog, um, they can start to have less control over their bowels. So you definitely want to consider those things. Um, but you've got to think what's realistic for your lifestyle as well. So if uh, you work a regular eight hour day, that's a long time for a dog to be contained. Um, I'm saying this as someone who did that for probably the first year, not quite a year and a half that I had my dog, but I really didn't have many other options. I was renting, I had this big dog, um, he was well trained, but again, I, I couldn't have the risk of potential damages. So I did keep him in an appropriately sized crate um, and I let him out right before I went to work and as soon as I got home, the first thing before I did anything else and the last thing before I left was take him out to break so that hopefully um, he was only holding it for about eight or nine hours. Now, because of my work situation, I wasn't able to come home uh, in the middle of my work shift and I realized that that's pretty unfair to the dog. Um, I, I can't hold my pee for eight hours. No amount of training will probably change that. Um, I have to pee every couple hours or every few hours anyhow. So I was trying to put myself in my dog's shoes and think how I can make that situation better. So ultimately I did get a four by eight kennel run. 
um, which is not not too big actually that's a pretty good size because while a large dog like mine is not able to run and play per se they're able to get up and walk around um, sort of stretch themselves out um, and maybe most importantly they can relieve themselves on one end so this is the opposite of, of the containment that we're trying to have with the crate um, he can relieve himself pee or poop on one end and still be able to walk around move around lay on his bed eat his food drink his water on the other side of the kennel so again a four by eight um, is a really nice size for that depending on the size of your dog you might be able to go down to like a four by four or something like that um, be careful of fenced in backyards for some of the same reasons that I've mentioned here um, dogs are really smart and they have lots of natural energetic athletic capabilities so climbing or jumping over fences could be a major issue um, underground fences I've never used one of the electric underground fences but I've heard they work really well for people as well so hopefully you enjoyed this overview of crates and kennels and in the next video on the topic I'll get into how to familiarize your dog uh, with getting into the kennel and staying in the kennel and how they can be more comfortable in their crate and how to use it in your daily management and behaviors.